say good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day, Thank ladies. You. Happy Mother's Day to you. Um, as we prepare for uh, our message from the Lord today, uh, normally every year I, I uh, am guided uh, by my wife, to be honest with you, to try to find something uh, nice to give you. Uh, as you all know, uh, Angela has is, is been down for a couple of weeks, and uh, though we made a valiant effort to, to try to have a, a gift to give you today, um, sometimes gifts aren't what they seem to be. And uh, so we had ordered some stuff for you ladies, and it came in, which there in itself was a, was a miracle, but it came in. And we opened the box and we looked at it, and I'm told, Angela, there ain't no way I'm giving this stuff to our church. <laughs> so we're sending that back, right? So the gift that I'm going to give you instead today is I'm going to try to make sure that I don't go over length on the sermon so that you can spend a, a mighty time with your family today, your, your children, your husbands, boyfriends, whatever the case may be. And, uh, and I'm going to try to do better next time, okay? So before you stone me about that, no, you know, I'm, I'm human. I got my faults, right? Um, and, and, and this just is a testimony to the fact that I rely heavily on my wife in everything that we do, okay? Uh, with that said, uh, it is Mother's Day, and, and praise God for that. Uh, we are not going to be in Matthew today. We're going to be in Luke. Uh, it's a couple books over, uh, so if you want to go ahead and turn to Luke, and I made it very easy for you, Luke chapter 1, uh, Luke chapter 1, we're going to look at uh, four verses here, uh, we're going to pick up in verse 34, John will have it up on the board for you as we begin, so if you don't mind, stand in honor of God's word. Luke Chapter 1, beginning in verse 34, as I read out of the ESV uh, version, begins with this. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Our Father in heaven, we pray in the name of Jesus that many things are accomplished today, but first and foremost, uh, that your word goes out and that it goes out uh, in, a, in a mighty way. And secondly, Father, today we thank you for uh, the gift of, of women and ladies and young ladies. And today I pray, Father, that they are honored well, not only from this campus, but in their families as well. Father, we are wholly submitted over to you and during this time that we are gathered together as the body of Christ, I pray in the name of Jesus that you stand me behind the cross so that each and every one of us may experience you in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Uh, not only did uh, I not remember to, or not remember, but didn't get the right uh, uh, things in the mail, I also didn't remember my phone today, so... Uh, to try to honor the promise I just made a few moments ago. You may see me from time to time reaching up here. I'm really not checking my emails, okay? I'm checking the time to make sure that I don't extend way out uh, because all of you know that your pastor is long-winded and we could be here for a while if there's not some kind of device to stop me, okay? Uh, John tries back there, but, you know, I got to where I kind of ignore him, so there you go. So. <laughs> Uh, all joking aside, it is Mother's Day, and praise God for mothers, right? Uh, praise God for, for not only mothers, but for, for stepmothers. Uh, I have a mother and stepmothers, or had a mother and stepmothers. 
Uh, praise God for uh, ladies that, that, that adopt children, ladies and families that, that foster children. Praise God for uh, ladies or young ladies that will grow up to be mothers someday. Praise God for mothers that step in in the place where mothers are, or there's a void where mothers should be. Praise God for everybody who participates uh, in, 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 that, in that area of raising children and grooming the next generation of life. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> with that said, uh, I'm going to share a little story with you about a little boy. Uh, <clears throat> when I was thinking, honestly, when I was reading this story and I was thinking about this little boy, uh, y'all all know little Michael, right? Uh, Helen's oldest son. When I was reading this story and thinking about it and how to how to uh, deliver it to you, uh, that little that particular little monster just kept on popping back in my mind, and he kept on popping back in my mind because I believe with all my heart that this is something that kid would do, right? <laughs> so so the story is this: it's 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 of a of a mother and a son, okay. And, and, the, and the son is, a, is about to go to bed, and mom is in the bedroom, you know, and he's, he's only four years old. And so as she's tucking him into bed, you know, the excitement is looming because the birthday is coming the next day. And all of y'all know how excited we get for our birthdays, right? Um, so especially children, some of us get a little older, we don't get so excited. Uh, but uh, for children, it's a very exciting thing. And so this mother was trying to communicate to the child, you know, about his birthday. And so she, she says, you know, do you understand? And I'm going to use Michael's name. I'm just going to plug Michael right in there. She says, Michael, do you understand how old you are right now? And so little Michael holds up four fingers. And mom is, is, is smiles and says, that's right, Michael. You're four years old today. But did you know that as you go to bed tonight, you go to bed tonight four years old, but when you wake up in tomorrow, do you know how old you're going to be? And little Michael, filled with enthusiasm, raises up his whole hand and he says, I'm going to be a handful. <laughs> right? So moms, for all of y'all that have had to deal with your handfuls, yeah. praise God for yeah. you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so as we look at our text today, uh, you've heard me uh, preach uh, bits and pieces of this text is one that you normally hear at Christmas time, right? When we're when we're thinking about the birth of, of Jesus Christ, uh, a lot of people use the, this part of Scripture and and uh, then illustrate, you know, through it, whether it be a sermon series leading up to Christmas or a Christmas sermon or candlelight service sermon. Uh, many people use this as is their Christmas uh, uh, sermon. However, if we look at this. If we look at this text a little closer, we understand that there's a whole lot more going on here than just the birth of Jesus. There's all kind of miraculous works of God going on in this text. And so uh, I, I just picked these four verses uh, for the simple fact that, you know, I'm dependent on the fact that, that now I've been your pastor. This is my, leading, my fifth year that I'm your pastor. Okay, and, and so I've asked you to raise your hand on numerous occasions. If you uh, claim to be a believer in Jesus Christ, I've asked you to raise your hands. Uh, if you pray, I've asked you to raise your hands. If you study your text, uh, the Bible, I, I, I've asked you to try to memorize some of the Bible. I've done all kinds of different things. Uh, so my assumption is, and that's a dangerous place for a preacher to step. I just want you to know. My assumption is, is that you know the birth story of Jesus so that I, I don't have to read the whole text, mm -hmm. right? But in verse 34, we see these words, And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? So your first point today is unwavering faith. Unwavering faith, okay? Okay. I want you to think about this with me for a minute. When Mary was only a teenager, she was confronted with the challenge to be completely submitted to God's will. When Gabriel 
gave her the angelic message that she was to carry the Christ, Mary was stunned. Go back with me 2,000 years now and think about that. In that day and age, young ladies uh, married or was betrothed to their, to their future husband, you know, uh, at the ages of 12, 13, 14 years old, so when we think about this, Mary is, a, is, is just a, possibly a teenage girl. And an angel from God comes to her and, and says that, that she is going to conceive within herself the Christ, the Savior of the world. And so that had to be a, a stunning moment for her. That had to be a shocking moment for her. And as we look at the text, it says that, how, Mary says, how will this be since I am a virgin? You see, Mary knew enough about uh, the anatomy of the body and men and women to know that, you know, you just don't conceive children if there's not two people participating in the conception process. You see, it takes a man and a woman lying together to conceive a child. Now, if you didn't pass sex ed, that probably just helped you get through that, right? Uh, but in the interim, what I want you to understand is this. Mary realized this even at her young age all those years ago. And so when she asked the question then, how will this be since I am a virgin, that question is not a doubtful question. She's not looking at Gabriel and saying, what, have you lost your mind? No, she's asking a legitimate question. How will this be? Remember, at this point, Mary is betrothed to Joseph. The betrothal uh, in, in that day and time meant that they were engaged to be married, essentially what our day and time would be, right? They were completely committed to one another. And, 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 and she knew that in that commitment that her and Joseph had never had any kind of relations. Those were saved for the, the wedding day and should continue this day to be saved for the wedding day, right? So she knew that, that something miraculous was going to have to happen. And so she asked this question, how will this be since I am a virgin? And with that question, then that leads us back to verse 18. And I will read that verse to you. Zechariah uh, was also approached by the angel. Right? And the angel told Zechariah uh, that he and his wife were going to, uh, in their old age, were going to conceive a child. Zechariah, however, responded differently than Mary did because Zechariah responded with disbelief and doubt. As a matter of fact, he said to the angel, how shall I know this? How shall I know this? In other words, he doubted and questioned what God could do. Dangerous place for us to be. The text illustrates to us later on that because of because of uh, uh, Zachariah's doubt, he was silenced, was unable to speak until the child was born. Mary, however, in her asking the question is asked differently. Her question is asked with a legitimate uh, des desire to understand. Right? She says, how will this be? How will this be? When we think about that and, and Mary's question about that, she understood immediately that something miraculous was going to happen. She just didn't understand how. You think about that. Uh, children are a miraculous gift from God. And for all of you ladies uh, here today that have, that have had children or cared for children or adopted children or been step-in moms or step-up moms or whatever your role is uh, in a child's life, you know it's just like Mary did. 
that, that conceiving, a, a being, uh, conceiving a child within your womb instantaneously without the, without the uh, uh, relationship of a man had to be something miraculous. It had to be. There was no other way. Gabriel's awesome, though. And because Mary's question was legitimate, and because it was uh, out of concern, and because she was an obedient woman to God, Gabriel responds and says, and the angel answered her, verse 35, and the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. The Holy Spirit. If you were here uh, a couple of weeks ago or tuned in on Facebook a couple of weeks ago uh, in the discipleship series uh, Bible study that John is doing, John actually dealt with the Holy Spirit and, and showed the class throughout the, t throughout the Word of God how much involvement the Holy Spirit legitimately and truly has in the work of God. It was an amazing Bible study, and I'm going to tell you this. These things are on Facebook, and if you haven't been checking them out, you need to check them out. You know, the, the reality of it is, is if we're going to be disciples of a living and active God, creator and sustainer of all things, it might be a real good under, under, uh, idea to understand the churchy words that we use. John's helping us with that. But here's the question that I, I pose to you today. Uh, have you ever really paid attention to how active the Holy Spirit really is? Have you ever paid attention to that? Think about it. Go all the way back to Genesis. Right? The Holy Spirit was there at the creation. Right? Not only was he there at creation, he was there when humans were formed. Think about that. The text actually says in Genesis, they will have our likeness. Our, that's, that's plural. That means more than just God. That means God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right? So, so the whole Trinity was there during that time. He was the person of the Trinity that led Jesus into the wilderness. Do you remember that when Jesus was baptized by John? Immediately when he came out of the water, right? He was led into the wilderness by the, by the Holy Spirit. And now then we see him at work here. And in the text says, right, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. See, the Holy Spirit is, is continually active in the work of God. The reality of it is, if you are here today, if you are on Facebook with us today, if you are on our, our YouTube uh, page with us today, if you are in the parking lot today, and you even for a moment believe that you have confessed your mess to, to the Lord our God and sought Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, beloved, let me tell you something. You didn't do that by yourself. It was the power of the Holy Spirit working through you to cause you to desire God, our Father. The Holy Spirit is 
is, is, is very awesome and very active throughout the Word of God. But Mary was unlike a lot of parents in the world today. Mary was, first of all, completely committed to God. So much so that she had no room for commitment to anything else. Moms, as, as mothers of children, uh, prospected mothers of children, stepmothers, grandmothers, you know, step-in mothers, no matter what role you play in a child's life, when you think about your role in a child's life, and, and as we look at Mary and how committed she was to God, she then becomes a mother worth imitating. A mother worth imitating. In that day and time, probably all young women were wondering, if they were going to be the one that conceived the Christ. But Mary was God's chosen one to bring into the world for us one of the, the most, the most, not one of the most miraculous miracle that happened. Amen. Right, because if, if God had not desired Mary to conceive and Jesus to be born, you and I wouldn't even be here today. We wouldn't even be here today. But moms, as you think about Mary being a mother worth imitating, I want you to realize this. Mary wasn't perfect. You know, Mary wasn't perfect. Yes, she is a, she is a, 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 a character in the Bible. She's a real-life person that lived, but she wasn't perfect. See, Jesus was perfect. And Scripture teaches us that none other but him was perfect. That means that everybody else had flaws, including Mary. Some would elevate Mary to a level that she doesn't uh, deserve to be in equal to or even above Christ. Mm -hmm. That is a very, very, very flawed belief system. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> Some would, would think that, that Mary was shared in Jesus' perfection. That she was just as perfect as Jesus was and desires the same worship and praise that Jesus should have. She was. We illustrate that to you. In John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, uh, we read these, these words. When the, wine, when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, listen to this, And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? Here you go. My hour has not yet come not yet come. You see, in, in Mary's imperfection, she didn't understand that, that, that for Jesus' public ministry to begin and the miracles to begin uh, in, in front of others, that that time had not arrived yet. When we think about it, Jesus is, is expressing the fact that he is dependent on his independent of his mother. As eager as Mary was to see Jesus do a miracle, she had no right to determine the time or the matter in which Jesus publicly revealed his glory. Sometimes, moms, we try to get our kids to do things. They don't want to do them. Now, I'm not talking about their chores or their schoolwork or being polite in public or any of that kind of stuff, right? But I'm talking about there's sometimes you really hope for your children maybe to grow up and be a doctor or an orthodontist or, you know, even a golf pro, right? You have these desires for your children to grow up and be one of these things. My mom didn't want me to be a golf pro, though, by the way. She was hoping I would be a tennis star, but let me tell you something. There's entirely too much running in that game, okay? I'm a walking kind of guy. 
Uh, and, and so that was it. But my mom tried to encourage me to go that way. It wasn't that she was trying to, to lead me down a, a, a darkened path. She was just trying to encourage me to do something that I really didn't want to do. I wasn't ready to do. You see, Jesus, uh, Jesus said to her, not only is, is not this is not the time or the matter in, in which his public uh, ministry should begin, Jesus makes his point gently and without being rude. However, Jesus did, did the act. You all know the story. Jesus then tells uh, those that are gathered there to go out and fill the vats full of water up to the brim. And then whenever the, the servants go and do that, Jesus tells them to dip out of the water and carry it to the person that is, that is in charge of the party. And then, and then what happens? Not only is it wine, but it's the best wine, the stuff that you normally save to the last instead of the beginning because you don't want people, or you give it first instead of the last because you don't want people to think you're cheap. <laughs> right? Then think about it. Everyone he met in his ministry was someone he was going to die for. So much so that when he met you and when he met me, in that meeting he knew he was going to die for you. He was going to give up everything as if he and I or you and him were the only people on the planet. Moms, love your children so much that, 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 that loving and caring for them becomes your highest priority in everything that you do. You may have children that are difficult children. You may have children that are a handful. Uh, you may have children that rebel, children that run the other way, children that misbehave, whatever the case may be. But mom, you know what? You, you are the image of Christ in that child's life. I don't always mean to, to badger what goes on in the, in the real world outside the doors of this campus, but the reality of it is you, you look at our children today and that illustration that I shared a couple weeks ago with you about the church for the first time in, in, in documented, recorded uh, statistics has fallen below 50%. The majority of that falls on the parents. See, church wasn't significant enough for the mom and dad to go to. And so the children didn't go to. So instead of being trained up in the way of the Lord, they're trained up in the way of the world. But let me share something with you. Uh, there is a greater percentage of children in church today because of mom. Mom makes up the majority of the church that brings the younger generations in that they may be trained up in the way of the Lord. So moms, as, 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 as Mary is one to be uh, imitated, right? You're imitating her by encouraging your children to show up with you on Sunday morning. So Jesus isn't being rude or dismissive in John 2, 4. He's politely pointing out that he follows God's timing, not Mary's timing. And that this is not his moment to be publicly revealed. But then let's look at another one. Mark 3, 31. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. So Jesus loved his family. Jesus loved his mom. Loved his brothers. Brothers didn't even believe him. Didn't even believe who he was until he was crucified. Mom believed in him. Moms always believe in us. Moms never give up on us. You can be the, 
the biggest pain in the rear. And mom is still going to love you. But they went to, to try to encourage Jesus to stop teaching and, and come out to see them. Though Jesus loved his mom. They didn't get it when he was teaching. Mary birthed Jesus. Gave birth to him. Brought him into the world. But he was on a mission from God, and that obedience included reaching as many people as possible with the gospel. With the gospel. See, Mary wasn't perfect. She didn't understand all that, 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 that Jesus was supposed to achieve. Or, or, or the things that Jesus was supposed to do in his short amount of time on, on earth. Think about it. Everyone he met, again, everyone he met, he was going to die for. And so therefore, interrupting his mission, even for a moment, could have had catastrophic effects on you and I today. Not only that, Jesus continued to teach and he said who is my mother and my brothers these are my mother and brothers illustrating to us that anyone that puts their faith and trust in Jesus Christ can become part of the family you can be part of the family you can be residents of the kingdom of heaven you can be on a temporal vacation here on earth living in the chaos of the world, getting beat down on a day-to-day -day basis, but know that this is just temporary. There is an eternity waiting for you, and that eternity is far greater than anything you will ever possess on this earth. And moms, they're the encouraging person behind that. Your next point is this. Not impossible with God, verse 36 and 37 says this. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. You wonder where I came with that point from, huh? <laughs> nothing is impossible for God. Mary or Gabriel gives Mary an example of yet another miraculous work of God. Ladies, the human body gets to a point where you no longer can conceive children. Sometimes medical issues cause that time to arrive upon you far earlier than you would anticipate. My little sister, uh, rest her soul, when, when she was 14, 15 years old, her little body wasn't working appropriately and, and she had to have a, a, a full hysterectomy and was never able to have children. But boy, let me tell you something. She loved kids. And she loved my, my son and daughter, Angela and I, son and daughter. And she loved, she loved our grandkids, the ones that she got to know before she passed. Sometimes that time comes up on you earlier than expected. Expect the reality of it is, is, is you will get to a point where you can no longer conceive children. And, and Gabriel points to what God did prior to sending him to Mary by pointing out that he already sent him to uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth and that she conceived. Proving yet again that God not only is creator and sustainer of all things, but God is almighty powerful and can do miraculous works in anybody at any time. So for anybody that might be out there thinking, man, I got to straighten my life up or I got to do this or I got to do that. Or for moms that may be just, just beating themselves down because the children's gone astray and they're little rebels, you know, I'm one of those parents, you know. Uh, I understand that. You, you, you think about those things and you realize, you know what? Nothing is too big for God. He can cause a woman 90 years old to get pregnant. He can 
cause a 13-year-old little girl to conceive a child without any kind of relation. Can you create the world with just a breath? Moms, he can work through you every day. And when you realize uh, that, that, that you're not dependent on yourself, but that you're dependent on the Lord to guide and shepherd your family, praise him for that. Because you know what? You are a precious gift from God. Your third point is this, an example for everyone. Not just moms, but dads too. An example for everyone. Think of the implications that, that Mary was going to face. And without hesitation, she willingly submits to God knowing that real life issues could erupt once it was found out that she was pregnant. You have to do a little bit of history there. In that time, if a, uh, a woman was was uh, caught or accused of being an adulteress, she was stoned to death. There's even a scene in the Bible where, where the religious leaders drag in a woman in, in front of Jesus and says, this woman is caught in the act of adultery. The Word teaches us, the Word of God teaches us that she's supposed to be stoned to death. What do you say? Jesus responds, whichever one of you has never committed a sin, be the first to throw a stone. And everybody depart. Mary must have known she was being asked to walk the way of radical criticism, probably persecution, and almost certainly the loss of Joseph. But she doesn't rebel, doesn't argue, doesn't look for another way, and doesn't even hesitate. Instead, she says, if this is God's will, she is the Lord's servant. She's the Lord's servant. Mary knew you don't negotiate with God. Moms, you know you don't negotiate with God. Right? God's will will be done, and, and we praise Him for moms. We praise Him for the fact that that he has delivered you uh, into our lives. Uh, John was the forerunner of Jesus. Moms are the forerunner of children. Right? You're the one that's going ahead of your children. You're the one that's, that, that's trying to keep your home safe. You're the one that, that, that when they get on the school bus for the first time, your whole body just aches because you're, you're being departed. They're being departing from you. Right? You're the mom that, that stays up late at night the, the day that they get their driver's license and you let them take the car out for a drive uh, or to go out with their friends and you stay up late at night waiting to hear that car return to the driveway. Moms, you're the one that encourage your little boys to be men of God your little girls to be ladies of God. You know you can't negotiate that fact with God. He gave them to you. He brought them through you for you to lead them by the word. Mary knew this so much so that look at verse 38 with me. It says, and Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word and the angel departed from her no bickering no complaint no hesitation unwavering faith is what Mary did moms Mary is a, a, a woman to imitate so let me tell you this I know uh, all of you here today Praise the Lord for that. I've seen all of you interact with your families. And I am absolutely blessed to, to shepherd a church where moms are so devoted and so compassionate. And here's the thing. 
You don't just love your kids. You love everybody's kids. How do I know this? BBS is how I know this. You pray over them. You teach them. You cook for them. You do crafts with them. These kids are our futures. And you moms, and you write the ship in all that they do. So I praise God for you. Our Father in heaven, may the will of our Father always be done through the mothers. No matter what role they play, Father, no matter whether it's a, a stepmom, a step-up mom, a step-in mom, a, a mother, a grandmother, Father, whether it's a mother that adopts children, a mother that fosters children, no matter what area or what role mothers play, women play in children's lives, may we always, always show reverent love to them, for they deserve to be praised. And they deserve to know that we as a church recognize the amazing role that a mother has. And so, Father, today I pray that each and every mother that has heard this, this sermon, I pray that they're encouraged. I pray that they, they realize, you know what? You're not going to be perfect at that job. But guided by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do very well in raising your children in the way of the Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name.